Hello and welcome to this DICE webinar. My name is John Eric Fossum. I am a professor at the Arena Center for European Studies at the University of Oslo, Norway, and the scientific coordinator of the Horizon 2020 project, Differentiation, Dominance and Democracy in the EU. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about differentiation and democracy and how these terms may be understood in the EU setting. There is one main point that, that I would like you to take with you after the video. Democracy requires differentiation. At the same time, too much of differentiation and the wrong types of differentiation will undermine democracy. We therefore need to clarify which forms of differenti differentiation are conducive to democracy and which forms are not. In order to address that, we need to understand what is meant by democracy and what is meant by differentiation, and based on that, clarify which forms of differentiation are conducive to democracy and which ones are not. Before doing that, however, we need to keep in mind that there are special challenges in terms of how to understand the relationship between differentiation and democracy in the European Union. The EU is an experiment in democratic governance where the following key question has not yet been settled. That is, is the EU a means for ensuring democracy between the member states? Or is the EU supposed to be a democracy itself, that is, without, with or without the EU becoming a state? Further, there are special challenges associated with differentiated integration a term that we often encounter in the EU setting and is linked to such terms as EU in different speeds, opt-ins and opt-outs, core Europe, Europe a la carte and so forth. Democracy means that citizens are able to govern themselves. Modern democracy is representative democracy. That means that citizens govern themselves through law and institutions. For citizens to be able to understand themselves as the authors of the laws that they are subject to, the citizens need to be able to participate in decision-making and the governing system needs to be able to take decisions that are binding on all. Differentiation means that the governing system is divided along territorial and functional lines. The problem then is that the more differentiated the governing system is, the more difficult it may be for citizens to control the decisions that affect them. This is because citizens must relate to and control not one single but a whole host of institutions and in multi-level systems such as the EU a whole range of member states. Nevertheless, as we have seen in connection with the 2020 American presidential elections, for democracy to function Power cannot be concentrated in one set of hands or in one single institution. It is precisely the fact that Congress has an independent power base that allows it to curtail the president. In the same vein, it is precisely because the courts understand themselves as independent that they have not given in to the president's attempts to change the outcome of the presidential election. A key element of the process of democratic backsliding in Hungary and Poland is one where the governments have sought to undermine the independence of the judiciary. Legislative, executive and judicial functions have to be located in different institutions. Parliamentary systems rely on parliaments holding the executive to account Presidential systems, such as the American system, operate with a system of checks and balances. The rise of so-called post-truth politics and fake news calls attention to democracy's dependence on expertise. Modern societies are very complex and require, and require access to expertise that has come about through professional specialization. This gives rise to functional differentiation. Modern governments are composed of a wide range of functionally divided ministries or EU directorates, each of which is responsible for its particular sector, be it finance, energy, climate, social policy, defense, etc. Democratic policymaking takes place through governments coordinating the work 
of the functionally divided public administration. Large and complex political systems, such as the United, such as the United States and the European Union, are multi-level governance systems. They are territorially divided with governments at different levels. That means that all citizens do not participate in all decisions that are made within the territory. Citizens hold the federal level or the EU level government accountable for what it is supposed to do, and they hold the member state government accountable for what it is supposed to do. This is still democratic insofar as those citizens that are appealed to or, subject, or subjected to a decision are able to hold the relevant decision makers accountable. Modern democracy is about majority rule coupled with minority protection. In order to ensure this, there is a key distinction between the public and the private sphere. That makes it possible for civil society and the public sphere to operate independent of the state or the system of governing. Without an independent civil society and public sphere, democracy cannot work. We see how countries undergoing democratic backsliding seek to undercut the autonomy of civil society. Thus far, we have seen that democracy is not only compatible with, but actually requires forms of institutional separation and functional and territorial differentiation. And now we turn to the EU, more specifically. Differentiated integration focuses on aspects of the EU integration process, such as multiple speeds, moves towards core Europe, and questions of variable ge geometry, that is, when territory and functions do not correspond. And Philip Smith has used the notion of condominio to depict this particular circumstance in its most pronounced forms. Now, these very various forms or manifestations of differentiated integration vary with regard to what they imply for the relationship between democracy and differentiation. Differentiated integration in terms of multiple speeds implies that states integrate at different speeds. That is not democratically problematic insofar as all eventually reach the same destination and do not prevent others from doing the same. If, however, some end up in a different place or with a different status, this raises difficult questions for democracy. More complex challenges for democracy are such notions as core Europe and variable geometry, which generally refer to permanent differences in member states' statuses. Can an arrangement whereby states weigh in differently in the governing system be compatible with democracy? A further set of questions pertains to when states gain opt-outs and exemptions or exceptions from EU legal provisions, be they primary or secondary laws, permanent or temporary provisions. In order to clarify whether the various instances of differentiated integration are democratically legitimate, we need to clarify our democratic standards and requirements. This is then a matter for normative theory. Mainstream democratic theory highlights equality of citizens and states and is therefore not very permissive with regard to those forms of differentiated integration that highlight permanent differences in the rights and statuses of states and citizens. For the EU, we need to establish what kind of system it is to see which conditions are relevant. And based on that, we need to develop the requisite and more specific criteria for establishing what forms of differentiation are conducive to democracy. In doing so, we will be able to establish which aspects of differentiation are compatible with democracy and which ones are not. That is then also what the EU 3D project is investigating. Thank you for watching and don't miss the other DICE webinars.